Well, hello again, and uh, now we continue the uh, muscles of the upper limb. We're going to start with uh, the deltoid, since that's what we ended with in my last video. And you will see again, the deltoid is taking an origin from the spine of the scapula, from the acromion of the scapula, and from the lateral one-third of your clavicle. The insertion is to what we call the deltoid tuberosity, the deltoid tuberosity on the shaft of your humerus. It's supplied by the axillary nerve. If we take this aside uh, to reveal the muscles uh, underneath, we will see here on the back of your shoulder that the spine of your scapula divided the fossa here on the back into a fossa above the scapula, above the spine, and the fossa below the spine. The one above the spine will be called supraspinatus, foss, supraspinous fossa, and the space here underneath the spine will be called infraspinous fossa. That will give attachment to two muscles. The one from the supraspinous fossa will be supraspinatus muscle. The one from the infraspinous fossa will be infraspinatus muscle. Both of them are inserted into the greater tubercle, and both of them are supplied by suprascapular nerve. Suprascapular nerve. Okay? So this one is your supraspinatus. This one is your infraspinatus. Both of them are inserted to the greater tubercle, and they are both supplied by suprascapular nerve. That gets us to a muscle that, as we said in our lecture, that looks like hot dog. Both of them here, they're round muscles, so we call them teres, teres muscle. But one of them is larger than the other, so we'll call the large one teres major, and the small one we will call teres minor muscle, teres minor muscle, okay? The teres major muscle and the teres minor muscle take origin from the scapula. And the insertion is the teres major will go to the, in, the, the intertubercular sulcus, whereas the uh, teres uh, minor will take an insertion uh, below the insertion of um, the infraspinatus on the greater uh, tubercle. So right below the greater tubercle, that you will have the insertion for the teres minor muscle. So one more time, this is your teres minor muscle, this is your teres major, this is your subscapularis, and this uh, infras, infraspinatus, I apologize, this is your infraspinatus, and this is your supraspinatus muscles. I forgot to mention the nerve supply for these two. The teres minor muscle will take uh, the axillary nerve, just like your deltoid muscle takes the axillary nerve. And the teres major muscle takes a nerve called lower scapular nerve, lower scapular nerve. So we have suprascapular nerve that gives the supraspinatus and the infraspinatus, and lower scapular nerve that gives you your teres major muscle, whereas the teres minor was supplied by the same, same nerve that supplies your deltoid muscle, and that is your axillary nerve, okay? If we look here to um, the anterior surface um, of the scapula, and we agreed here that we had uh, a fairly large um, fossa here, we called it subscapular fossa, there is no spine that divides it, like uh, the posterior aspect. And the muscle that attaches here is called subscapularis muscle. Subscapularis muscle, which is this one. The subscapularis will insert itself into the lesser tuberosity, the lesser tuberosity of uh, the lesser tubercle of your humerus, the lesser tubercle of your humerus. The, um, the subscapularis muscle is supplied by a nerve 
called subscapular nerve. Subscapular nerve. So makes it easy to remember. Uh, subscapular nerve, subscapular fossa, subscapularis muscle. Okay. Once again, this is your uh, teres major muscle, which we saw from the other end. This tendon here, or the end of this muscle that got cut, that is the remaining of your latissimus, um, uh, um, uh, latissimus dorsi muscle. That is the end for your latissimus dorsi muscle that also inserts itself into your intertubercular sulcus. Intertubercular sulcus. Okay? All right. So let's move on to the muscles of the arm. Before we get there, you will see that there is a muscle that originates from the coracoid process here um, to the brachial area. So we call it coracobrachialis. Coracobrachialis. Do not mix these two muscles together. There are two muscles here. One of them is below. That's your coracobrachialis. And this one here is your short head of your biceps brachii, the biceps brachii muscle. Um, the biceps has two heads. One of them is the short one, as we said, that it's coming from the coracoid process. The long head is coming all the way from your supraglenoid tubercle, the supraglenoid tubercle. So this is your biceps muscle or the biceps brachii. This is your coracobrachialis. We have one more muscle, and you can see that underneath here from this side, underneath your um, biceps brachii. But if I would flip this to, um, to show the lateral side, you will be uh, able to appreciate better your um, brachialis muscle. This is your brachialis muscle. Okay, so we have brachialis, biceps brachii, and coracobrachialis muscle. The interesting thing, all the three muscles are supplied by the same nerve called musculocutaneous nerve. Musculocutaneous nerve, both the brachialis and um, the, both brachialis, which is right here, and the biceps brachii are powerful flexors of your uh, uh, forearm. Uh, if you remember, the, the biceps brachii will insert itself into the radial tuberosity right underneath the neck of your radius, whereas the brachialis will insert itself into the ulnar tuberosity right underneath um, the, coronoid, the coronoid process of your ulna. All right? Again, the nerve supply for these three muscles, the biceps brachii, the coracobrachialis, the brachialis muscle, all the three are supplied by the musculocutaneous nerve. The musculocutaneous nerve. If I am to turn this backward to show um, the extensor um, part of our arm, find it very difficult to manipulate a camera and at the same time <laughs> try to point at things. Next time I will try to remember to bring assistant to help me with this. Anyhow, um, this powerful extensor here, we call that the triceps muscle. We call it so because it has three heads, three heads. One of them is the lateral head. This is the lateral head of your triceps. This one here is the medial head of the triceps, and that one here is the long head of the triceps. The long head is penetrating between the teres minor and teres major muscle. The nerve supply for your triceps is the radial nerve, radial nerve. There is another small muscle all the way down here, and it's marked here by the letter A, if you can see it, that's the anconius muscle. That's also an extensor, but it also unlocks the ulna or adducts the ulna so um, it doesn't move. It stabilizes the ulna when you are doing um, extension. Um, that is your anconius muscle over here. Both the anconius and your triceps muscle 
are supplied by the radial nerve, the radial nerve. So these are the muscles of our arm. Um, as uh, we agreed, we had the biceps brachii, we had the coracobrachialis, the brachialis, and on the back we had the triceps and we had the anconius. The triceps has three heads, the long head coming from the infraglenoid tubercle, and the two short heads are coming from the humerus, which are lateral and medial heads. The triceps is inserting itself on the olecranon of your ulna, and it's a very powerful extensor of your forearm. Okay, um, we'll see you then in the next video, which will be uh, entailing the muscles of the forearm. See you then.